I just knew that I was meant for something more. I knew I could do the job, all of that kind of stuff, but I was meant for something more. Figure out what you want to do, truly. When I say design a life, design your life. It's your life. All of the roles that we play, somewhere along the line, we forget about us and what matters to us and just allowing ourselves to dream. Where do you want to be? Where do you want to go? Write it down. I'm super passionate about that, but write it down. It, and dream big. It's about... How do you find that courage? Welcome back to the Living Richly podcast. We are super happy to have you back. It's been a week and we're ready to dive into another topic. And this is uh, one that Kate and I are super passionate about daring to dream and the challenges that we face around it, not just women, but men. So, Let's just kick it off and talk a little bit about our our female journey. Our female journey. Yeah, I think, you know, when we're talking Dare to Dream, we're talking a lot about uh, sort of our recent career changes. Recent, that's a big word, but I I know for me it's recent. <laughs> that's why yeah. it's the word. Yeah. Um but my journey to Dare to Dream and really like carve out and pave a path and start, you know, designing the life I love, part of that starts with career, right? So that's a a huge part of what we do every day. And for me, um, you know, most recently I was at a job and I had been there for a while and I loved my, my team. I loved the organization I worked for, but career wise, I really plateaued. Like I got to this place where there was no movement. Yep. And so I started to not feel great when I go into the office. And then I started to really ask myself some questions about, you know, what did I want and what I ended up you know, discovering what I wanted was to be closer to creative. I'm in marketing. I missed the like creative process that went with it. So I ended up jumping ship and going to another organization that was in the, in the U S in a role that I thought would be that. And it turned out that that role wasn't what I had expected it to be. And then really quickly, when I got clear on, this is not what I thought it was going to be bold lip where I am now, started to come into my life. So, and now I'm working for an organization. We're a creative agency. It's a, you know, there's five of us. It's super small. I'm super close to the creative and the production. I work with phenomenal women, but that journey for me, right, started here. I ended up here, which wasn't where I thought it'd be. Nine months later, I left that job. So that was a hard decision for me the first time, let alone the second time to then jump ship into a much smaller company with less benefits. You know, it's not a US owned conglomerate with, you know, yep. benefits and bonuses and all of the all of the the perks that come with that. So sort of navigating that journey has been really, really difficult for me. And we're going to talk about yeah. some of that ins and outs. But I can tell you I wouldn't change it for the world. But I love that you use that first initial jump almost as like yeah. a stepping stone and you didn't view it as failure because a lot of times when we make those jumps we feel like if I jump if I don't land right the first time then why did I even bother or I shouldn't have done this but I love that you just took that almost like a little detour yeah it's like looking at a road map when you're you're going on a road trip somewhere there's probably five six seven ten ways to get somewhere yeah everybody's going to go a different way and there's no wrong way because you're going to get to your destination at some point. And so I love that you use that as a stepping stone. I think that kind of morphs into when I, uh, so I spent the bulk of my career in the HR space for 17 years. I was suddenly laid off because we had gone through a restructuring Mm -hmm. from a U.S. organization into a Canadian merger. So very different just culturally, but also sure. a duplication yeah. of efforts. So hence the, um, the restructuring and, um, I was offered another job, uh, comparable to my level and my salary, but I turned it down and it was a hard decision to turn down. So I opted yeah. for the severance instead of the offer knowing that a severance only lasts so long. And I still remember to this day, I had people say, you are fucking crazy (laughs) because you have 17 years in this company. You've built so much. You've got all your benefits, all of your... um, You know, your RSP, all your all of that kind of stuff, which was going to be transferred over. But I 
I just knew that I was meant for something more. I knew I could do the job, all of that kind of stuff, but I was meant for something more. And that's when then I jumped into what I'm doing right now, the coaching, uh, moved into the fitness space. Um, but that came with huge risk on literally chopped my income, not just in half, but like down to three quarters, just bought a brand new house. I was laid off two weeks after we had signed wow. papers, but I was able to build out what I love to do now, not without the bumps, but so worth it. Well, and the bumps are like the bumps are going to happen. They happen. Yes. In life. They happen everywhere. I can yep. I can say, you know, when I was looking at transitioning into this role, it came with all of that, those financial woes oh. and that like, oh, my God, how am I going to do this? And then I, you know what? I carved out what I wanted. I was able to build Get To Mindset and my coaching business while I'm working for Bold Lip. I have the best of both worlds. I work four days for Bold Lip and then I work the rest for myself. We get to do this on Fridays and record. And so really starting to take those steps. But I know for a lot of women it's hard. So what what holds women back? What is that? So I think confidence yeah. is is a big thing. Huge. I think Huge. and I know that there's lots of you know studies and whatnot out there, but historically women tend to lack confidence yeah. versus men. Um specifically around career changes, specifically around finances, specifically around uh making leaps. Um, in life. And, you know, when we talk about career, since we are talking about career, historically, men are typically promoted faster than women. Um, and, 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 you know, that, that just opens up a whole new realm of, so what are the struggles? Like, why do we, yeah, why do we struggle with that? I would add that men are also often promoted. It's backed by research. They're promoted based off their leadership potential. Yeah. And women are promoted off of their performance. Yeah. So that messes with women and their confidence. Yeah. I watched something really uh, interesting. It was Jay Shetty and Mel Robbins. I think I don't know whose podcast it was, but it was one of their podcasts. And they, and uh, Jay asked the, uh, the question to Mel about confidence in girls. She was talking about her daughter, one of her daughters. And he's like, well, where do you think it stems from? And she's like, well, I have my own theory. And it was really interesting. So she she brought it back to her girls and puberty yeah. going to that state where when men, boys hit puberty, we almost like it's like we we honor it. Right. Your voice is deepening. You're becoming you know, yeah. more of a man. Yeah. You're growing. It's yeah. all these things we associate and we don't really talk about it a lot. But boys, everyone really interested in when a girl gets her period. It is like newsworthy, apparently, <laughs> right? And you think about it, like we it's, don't talk about it. So all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, I'm now like I'm covering up because I, you know, I'm yeah. physically developing. I don't feel good in my own skin. Everyone's judging me based off this thing. And yeah. so that confidence level starts. And it's a really interesting perspective to think how early it starts for women where we start to feel oh, totally. small. Then you throw social media on top oh, of it, right. which you and I didn't have no, when we were growing th up. Thank God. I mean, we're still very young and everything. <laughs> right? Yeah, of course. What about you, Wendy? <laughs> I grew up. I was on there on Snapchat. But then, <laughs> Snapchat. <laughs> I'm too old for Snapchat, <laughs> You're never but not too old quite as old for TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. Um, but but now we see, you know, as we're raising teenagers, kids comparing themselves, specifically girls, to a free app like Instagram, like TikTok, um, and comparing themselves, which starts to chip away um, at their confidence. So, you know, people will often say to us in passing, like. I want to try to build my confidence. Like, yeah. how do how do I do it? If we were to identify, say, two or three things on, like, maybe the biggest topics on what we yeah. feel contributes to yeah. lack of confidence, I think what would we say? Well, there's lots. I think um, if I was gonna, my top one is, and I witnessed it being in corporate land for a long time was just women not having a strong voice around the table. So in a meeting, women tend to hold back. And that's, that's like, I understand that's an overarching statement, but it's, it's data proven. And we'll add that in the show notes so you guys can read it. But it is women don't tend to have a voice at the table. And I speak from experience where I know, and I hate like, and hates a strong word, but I do hate this, that subconsciously, if I'm in a room, 
and there's a female and a male leader, I will trust the male leader over the female leader because it's innate. It's how I was raised. I was raised with only men in leadership roles. Men had the voice. And so I, and I'm all for celebrating women. It's, yep. I celebrate women in business. I'm all about women empowerment, but I realized how deeply rooted it is in my subconscious that I will listen to or trust a male in that setting, in the work setting more. Versus a female. And so mm-hmm. I think what happens for women is we feel like we just, we don't, our voice isn't as strong or as powerful. I think it's shifting as more women get into leadership roles. But if you look at the data in the States, there are more CEOs named John in the US than there are female CEOs. Wow. So the yeah. stats are still there. So yeah. I think the dynamic is shifting. I do believe our kids and our our our, our youth that's shifting. But I know for me, for someone I feel enlightened and I'm, I'm I I want to celebrate women, I yeah. still have this like unconscious thing that happens to me right. in a room. Yeah. That's like that that's a huge one. Yeah. I think another one is And we do this at work, but we also do this with ourselves is discounting positive feedback. (laughs) How many times have we been complimented on something like, oh, I love that shirt. And our first response is, Mm -hmm. oh, this old thing or, oh, like we tend to justify or twist the comment around so that we're not like we can't just say, oh, thank you. (laughs) Um, And it's something I've really had to try to work hard on, like even in the um even in the workspace, even in my personal life, just when somebody is giving me p- positive feedback yeah. um, or a compliment to really just embrace that and accept that without that. feeling the need to add a rebuttal justify. to it or justify <laughs> it. Um, and because of that, um, it just becomes a habit. And it's almost like retraining your brain to yeah. learn how to say thank you. And I pick up on it very quickly when I'm coaching people or if I'm in the fitness space where I'll congratulate somebody or I'll recognize somebody. And uh, and it just happened this morning, actually. And, and there was one woman I went up to and I congratulated her on what she was doing in the gym. And I kind of got like a, a little eye roll and I was like, no, no, no celebrate that. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. But we pick up on it, but yeah. I still find myself um, discounting it uh, yeah, on my I, own. I, I, I yeah. just, I just did it. Yeah. Eric said, Oh, I like your shirt. I'm like, Oh yeah, I found this in the back of my closet. I actually <laughs> just did it on the way in. And I'm like, yeah, I never wear this. Like, and I'm like, yeah, yeah it's yeah. funny. Instead of just saying, thank you. Yeah. Instead of just saying, uh, thanks babe. <laughs> yeah. So I think that starts yeah. to chip away a lot at our confidence. And then I think, um, especially for women is the judgment of others. Oh my God. So judgment from others, fear of failure, feel of what will they think, feel of the pressure. I mean, we just talked about social media pressure, but the pressure right. for women is like, it's astronomical. We're supposed to show up as, you know, perfectly in our career. We're supposed to show up as the perfect mom, as the perfect uh, partner, right? We're supposed to uh, look a certain way. God forbid we age, we're not supposed to have an opinion. I go to, I haven't seen the Barbie movie yet, but I have seen that clip. I don't know if you've seen it. Where, no. Where she talks, it's just, I, and I'm forgetting the actress's name, but she goes, she's talking about, it's all about, uh, I'm going to send it to you because you're going to love it, but it's all about the ways that uh, women are supposed to show up. Like I'm supposed to uh, be thin, but not too thin. And right. I'm not supposed to talk about wanting to be thin. I'm supposed to talk about wanting to be healthy because that's how it is. I'm supposed, my job, I'm responsible to make men comfortable in a room. That's my responsibility. I'm supposed to have a voice, but not too loud of a voice. And it goes down this hole. And it's all, I think, what women struggle with a lot, which is these expectations and this comparison to those around us. And social media is just amplified that. Yep. hundred percent. Like through uh, the roof. And then over time, right, that starts to chip away. Oh, does it? So matter? then it's about how do you find that courage? So, you know, with our topic being daring to dream, we've yeah. talked about confidence and how that slowly chips away. Totally. How do we then um, find that courage to take whatever leap? I have so many people. I know you do too. Yeah. We talked about this where people will kind of look at my journey of going through where I've been through with my career, yeah. um, my separation, my divorce, how, you know, rebuilding that relationship with my girls, um, all of that kind of stuff. And people will say like, oh, I want to make a change in X, Y, and Z in my life. I just don't have the courage. I don't know where to start. Um, so how do we find that courage? Yeah, great question. I think I believe the courage comes from within. 
I, I think we talk so much on the show about community and I think community matters. hundred percent. However, I think you have to be really careful when you're starting um, this sort of leap of faith or change um, who you surround yourself with. Because if you get the negative nillies in your ear, everyone's going to have an opinion, right? Family in particular, they want to keep you safe. Even your friends sometimes want to yep. protect you and they're yep. coming from a great place, but they're not coming usually. from- Usually. <laughs> yeah, usually. That's really good. <laughs> you hope. Yeah. You hope. But I think you have to, the courage is within- So I think you have to get really clear. I always say this like dream, figure out what you want to do truly. When I say design a life, design your life. It's your life. Where do you want to be? Where do you want to go? Write it down. How do you want to feel? How do you want to feel? That's a great one, right? And what, what does that look like for you? And that's for you. That's not for anyone else. That's for you. And then I think as you start to get confident in what you want, you have to start mapping out how you want to get there. So what does that change look like? If you identify you love photography, okay, well, maybe you start taking some photography classes. Like the courage doesn't flick. It's not like one day I'm feel I'm going to go. Like I no, it's just yeah. it's a slow build up. Yeah. And then I think courage gets supported by the right community when you're making that shift. Yeah. You need people around you who might not agree with what you're doing, but who will fundamentally support you yep. on that journey. So right away, yeah, because I love analogies. Yeah. <laughs> what? Right away. <laughs> what? <laughs> right away when you said that, yeah. I thought like when you were saying just it doesn't happen right away, I thought right away of a farmer. He plants his seeds. Yeah. He doesn't expect them to that the crop to overflow with abundance yeah. in, you know, a couple of weeks. But that's exactly the same thing. You're putting, you're planting seeds in your uh, field, field of dreams. Oh, yeah. field of dreams. The movie. movie. Oh, that was, that was, gosh, well done, Wendy. <laughs> Look at that analogy. <laughs> Look at that analogy. Look at me celebrating myself. <laughs> Congratulations. Fantastic. But as you're, as you're planting your seeds, yeah. You, we don't know what's happening underneath, right? Yeah. But we know that magic is about to happen. Then when you find your right community, you find that community that's going to help you water those seeds, right? Doesn't that, yeah. isn't Yeah, I love <laughs> you it. see where I'm going yeah, with it? Yeah, I can. I can just paint the picture. All joking aside, though, yeah. I think 100%, right? You've got to find those people that are going to help water your seeds to help your crop flourish yeah. um, and not the people that are going to be hacking away or, you know, digging your seeds up. But all of that comes with practice. Um that can also morph into not leading the someday life. Yeah. Someday yes. I will research photography courses. Yeah. Someday I will, you know, start <laughs> to really look at the Pinterest board that I created to start to plant some ideas. Someday I will, you know, join that new gym. Someday all of that. So living that someday life is something that we just habitually do over and over, but then recognizing Someday might not be any day uh, because, you know, and, and I have somebody in my life right now that is going through a really hard time with health issues. Mm. And I look at this person and I think, gosh, those some days might not be any days because of what they're struggling with. So when your faith in what you want and what keeps you up at night, like when you lie in bed at night, now sometimes I'm thinking like, did I actually take the laundry out of the washing machine right. and put it in the dryer. I, I never do that. Of ever. course you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so that the mildew doesn't set right, in. Right. right. And then I'm like, oh, now I got to wash it again right. for the third time because I keep forgetting to flip exactly. the laundry. Never happened. But when you're thinking about those things that keep you up at night, um, when your faith outweighs your fear, mm. when you keep thinking about the same things over and over, that's the first sign that you know that you're ready to make a change. And now it's about executing it because the hope... The hope that you have and what you envision, that whisper in your head of your mind saying, maybe you can, maybe, yes, you can, when the whole world is shouting out, that's impossible, nobody's done that before, or you're different than everybody than everybody else. When when you start paying more attention to those whispers yeah. and really yeah. listening to your gut and your yeah. heart, that's when you'll know this is the path I'm supposed to be on. And you'll yep. be able to decide which voice matters most. Yeah. Those external factors or that Agreed. voice that's whispering to you I, every night. I totally agree. And I think it's so important. Like, I, I 
think we know intuitively when things are off. Yes. Like I think we gotcha. know. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I call it like it's the it's icky. I feel icky and I don't like it's, that's my medical term. Yeah. I feel icky but I don't feel good. I don't yeah. feel good in my skin. Yeah. I, like I'm I doesn't sit well with me. I you know, I'm going into the office and I'm unhappy and I don't want to be here. When when pay attention and and give that room. Give it some attention. Yep. You don't have to dwell in it, but be aware of what's happening in those moments because if you're feeling this way, that's now I I I know when my body's off. Like yep. I can I physically don't want to do something, my body almost is like pulling totally. me in the opposite direction. We just, we don't pay enough attention to it. We don't. We're so worried about like, oh, I just don't want to go to work today. It's like, well, no, get present to that. Get present to that feeling and that emotion. Yeah. It's often times when you get present to that, that change will happen. And it doesn't always have to be this massive change. It could be like a small career shift. is not you know, you and I took pretty big leaps. Not every leap is massive mm-hmm. in its, in its size. Right. Yep. But change as we, and I think, pretty sure we did an episode on change but change can be hard for a lot of people and it's 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 just get present to that yep. feeling in your body yep. physically the episode that we did a couple of weeks ago with janine yeah. uh sharon on Great she episode. speaks yeah. specifically about the icky feeling Ick. and when she opened up her second fitness studio right and she said yeah. exactly that she's like i felt it in my stomach it was a yucky feeling i didn't listen to it still went ahead and opened it and and so and then she speaks specifically about learning how to connect to that feeling of your gut yep. and and almost like that's your I was just thinking of a, of a word, but I lost it, but almost like your pulse check. Yeah. Um, One of the yuckiest feelings. And I and I remember this from years ago, a friend and I would call it the Sunday night yuckies. <laughs> yeah, because Red, Sunday night. Week. Sunday night is the night. Eight o'clock is the night where everybody hates their life. Yeah, because the weekend's over. They got to go to a work or go to go to a job that maybe they don't yeah. like. Yeah, they got to do all the things that they don't want to do. Yeah, and paying attention to that gut feel on. Well, why do I feel like this? Am I going to feel like this for fifty two weeks every year? Um, That's a whole you, lot of time to be feeling yeah. not well. I can tell you, since uh, moving to a four day work week, the shift for me has been massive. There, there is just not this feeling of of dread. Yeah. Also, I love what I'm doing right now, but yes. I don't have this dread of going into the office on Monday. I feel really, you know, and my Fridays are like busy. Don't get me wrong. I'm like catching up on the week. I'm doing all kinds of stuff, right? Podcasting. Podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love, which like fills my cup immensely. But I do notice a big difference. Yeah. So when you start to carve out for some people, maybe they want to work, you know, five days a week and that's great. But for me, that four day work week has really helped for me. So what I do know though, for a lot of people, what's holding them back is there's fear, right? So maybe we can talk a little bit about what are some of the fears that keep people back? Yep. Right. I'm going to call it out. What? Money. Money. <laughs> What? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, but I love that you mentioned the four-day work week. Yeah. Because there's people probably listening right now that are like, well, that's great that you guys can work four-day work weeks. I can't do that. Or I'm going to take a hit on it, my, yeah. my whatever. So I think money and financial concerns are a huge thing for Agreed. people. And what I love most about this is you and I are like open books yeah. because we've absolutely both gone through that. Yeah. The rebuild. So yeah, money. The rebuild. Money is, Love a, that. is a big one. So I can I can speak for me like it took me eight years to rebuild myself financially after the divorce. And I was finally in a really good spot when I decided to make all of these career changes. And so you better believe that money was at the forefront of that. I'm I'm a single mom. I, you know, I purchased a home, like I have responsibilities. And so when I looked at the first jump, it was a US company, it was great salary, great benefits, great bonus, money was great. When I got there, I was not in a good headspace and moving over where I was now, it was like like pay decrease. It was the benefits were there, but very small, like it's a small company. Um, And it was a big reality check for me to be like, can I do this? What matters more to me? And I can tell you 
the money mattered. I have to be able to pay my bills. I have to be yep. like, that's, I, I don't encourage the anyone table. to take a leap of faith without being financially responsible. I don't. Um, but it was a real struggle for me to be like, okay, what matters more? Is it money, like financial security or my mental health and well being? Yep. And so, as long for me, like I'm whatever, I'm like crazy spreadsheet girl. So I map everything out to the last cent Love it. Um, so that I know exactly what's coming in and what's going out. Uh, I made an educated decision knowing that there would be some sacrifices and quite a few. And I was OK with that. My what was important to me, my kids life or their experience in my home, what they're used to would not shift. So I would sacrifice for me. But what their experience had been finally after eight years of getting us to a good spot again, I didn't want them to feel any change. And they haven't. But they're, it's not like it's not it, like a, this magic thing. It's stressful and it's hard. And yep. at some point you do have to make it work. But you also kind of have to trust a little bit that your mental health and your well-being here will will lead to more financial gain down the road, yep. right? And that's that's the journey part. And that's the fear that holds so many people back. So many people back. And I think that you mentioning, Kate, being financially responsible, yeah. that is a huge difference than being financially stable. Right. I think. I agree. Because people can have yeah. different versions of stability. Yeah. When I make this amount of money, then I'll do this. When yeah. I make, and that kind of goes back to leading the someday life. Right. Being financially responsible is so much bigger and so ties so much more into your personal life, yeah. supporting your kids, your mental health, all of that kind of stuff versus financial stability. Now, the two can probably be tied in, right? Yeah. Because you want to be able to pay your bills and all that kind of stuff. But there's a difference between being f responsible with how you're spending your money and where you're choosing to put that money when you are raising kids as a single mom. Same experience for me. Yeah. Being laid off from a very good job Yeah. Um. to, yes, the choice I made. And I have had a couple of people say in my life, well, that's the choice you made to go into a um, a career or a work environment yeah. where I trade time for money. Yeah. When I don't teach, when I don't coach. Yeah. I don't get paid. Right. If a class is canceled or a client can't, I don't get paid. Right. So I've given up that steady uh, paycheck every two weeks yeah. to be able to do what I love. Yeah. But we are like, so eight years. Yeah. Our journey, I keep forgetting that our journeys are exactly the same in terms of timing, it's but crazy. it's taken me eight years and I'm still climbing Yeah, and trying to rebuild. Then after separation, divorce, yeah. right? We all kind of know what that involves. Yeah. Um, and then buying a new house later in life. Uh, and, and one of our listeners yeah. actually has talked about that before around feeling a little different from other people because of starting over, but learning to appreciate the journey and not wanting to change it for anything. So, so who cares if I still have, not who cares? Sorry, I shouldn't say that. Nobody wants to have a mortgage, right? We all want to have like more money, but not being able to trade where she is right now for where she was before. I wouldn't nope. trade. And I know so many women that the rebuild as I call it, but the rebuild was a journey and it was an experience and it was, they wouldn't change it for the world. It was hard. It's supposed to be hard, right? Yeah, yeah. It was hard, not an easy road, but where they are today is exactly where they want to be. They couldn't be happier and more fulfilled. And I think the fear of, of money, if that's what's really holding you back, map it out, figure it out because I believe there's always a way yeah. And that comes with, it doesn't mean you don't sacrifice some things. You might be now, you know, sacrificing things that you've finally got back to, but it's a choice. So my choice on a four day work week came with the ability to build get to mindset on the side. So it's allowing me to build a business. Bold Lip then is now like a full. All of us work four days a week. That was a company wide decision. We're an agency where people, you know, make their annual salary and work four days a week. I know when people are like, well, it must be nice. You get to work four days a week. And it's like, no, I chose that. Yep. And I, I set an intention and I built my life around it. Yep. And I think it's really easy for us to look at other people's lives and be like, oh, it must be nice. And it's like, 
okay, yeah, it's, it's, I'm designing a life, but there are sacrifices that happen for me to get where I'm going. And not everybody sees that, right? Like for a lot of people, women, especially, we will build in silence. (laughs) Oh God. (laughs) But we will build quietly where it's very easy to see. And I still have people say like, wow, like not, so yeah. So the one comment that gives me a rash and makes me go batshit crazy is you're so lucky (laughs) fuck luck (laughs) this is not (laughs) it's not about luck steve's smiling steve are you there (laughs) (laughs) he's laughing but in all seriousness none of this has anything to do with luck yes you can be in the right place at the right time and have the right people in your life but this is all about being intentional so when you say map things out yeah and uh, you know, f- right away when I think about that, I think of writing things down. Yeah. We get all of these things. And I say this to my older daughter all the time. Things percolate in our mind and then our mind starts spinning around like a hamster wheel and then nothing gets solved when yeah. everything is just going around and around. So yeah. how do you map it out? How do you write it down? And for the people, women, speaking to you, who have a really hard time asking for help, not us. <laughs> Never. Winnie and I are great. <laughs> I got it. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> but sometimes asking for help is what we need to do. I'm terrible at spreadsheets. I'm yeah. terrible at math. I can help you. <laughs> I'm really good at them. <laughs> but finding Anyhow. people in your life yeah. that you feel comfortable and, and maybe part of it is pride and just kind of putting that ego off to the side and asking people that you know who are good at something that can help you kind of decipher what it is have them help you map it out have them help you talk it out because a lot of times just kind of getting that out there is a first step to be able to creating the life that you want and i love what you say about fuck luck because it's so true so true and when people i i know because i have the same reaction i'm like i'm like you're so lucky. Yeah. Well, yeah. I worked my ass off to get where I am mm-hmm. and I, I have made choices and I've made yep. s- that sometimes come at a sacrifice to me. Like I, it's not this easy. Like I just created this. It's this morning, uh, timely talking about choices, driving my daughter to her volleyball practice this morning before school and she's late and we're in the car and I'm like, well, you're late. I'm like, you chose to be late. And she looked at me and she's like, I didn't choose to be late. She's 13. I didn't choose to be late. And I'm like, well, you know what your actions are now why you're late. You chose to spend more time on your hair or you chose to like, I don't know, take 30 minutes to pick an outfit. You chose all those things. And by choosing those things to choose to spend your time on that, you're now late. And she's like, oh, right. Just couldn't get her head around. And did she roll her eyes so hard that your uterus fell out? <laughs> that never happens, Wendy. Because <laughs> mine falls out all the time. <laughs> I love it. There was one of those. Yeah, it was one of those. And I could, but I could see in the back of her head a moment of like, oh, like she, she, yeah. she it resonated like for a nanosecond as it does for a 13 yeah. year old. But I could see that she's like, Oh, okay. So by me making this choice, it's making this, right? And but what so, is a teaching moment, though? Yeah, those for them, right? Because I say that to my yeah. oldest all the time. Like, you always have a choice on who you listen to, yeah. right? Because she's old enough now where, you know, always respect your elders, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But you have a choice as to where your energy goes, who yeah. you choose to share things with, yeah. who, what you choose to absorb, how you choose to manage your yeah, time, I agree. right? So if you're scrolling on your phone for an hour and then you're suddenly late for work, you're not late because of traffic. You're not late because you're late because you chose that. So I love that you kind of use that as that. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll see how teaching long. moment for you. Yeah. We'll see if it sticks <laughs> there. I'm sure but, her hair looks uh, great. <laughs> it did, did look great. Um, okay. I have, uh, we talked a bit about being stuck. Yeah. Maybe let's dive into that a bit more because I think you and I both know what it feels like to feel stuck. We talked about the ick, but I think sometimes there's other ways that it it shows up that maybe we can help people, you know, yeah, learn from. Yeah, I so I think going back to that feeling of dread, yeah. listening to your gut, I know we spoke about that, but I I can't stress that enough because we are always so go go go. Everything is like in the world that we live in, it is yeah, sensory overload. And the stress that people face today, not that they didn't face it 
you know, 20 or 30 years ago, but it's so much different because you've got environmental stress, oxidative stress, yeah. physical stress, mental stress, emotional stress, oh all of that God, kind I'm of stress. stuff. I'm so stressed. Why? <laughs> then, stress. then, you know, the pandemic, you yeah. know, three years ago, uh, almost four actually, which is crazy. Wow. To think about all of that kind of stuff. And because we're so used to being on reactive mode versus proactive mode, we just don't stop. Yeah. And listen. Yeah. And it's very yeah. uncomfortable for us to stop and listen. Um, people have a tendency to always want to kind of talk or fill, you know, the time with either doing something yeah. or and and so just learning how to sit and be, even if it's for a couple of minutes, to really give yourself that gut check. Yeah. How am I feeling? Yeah. Um, and there's a journal out there and it's called the five minute journal. I know my oldest daughter uses it and it's simple, but it gives you kind of those gut checks on yeah. what am I doing right now? Yeah. How am I feeling? Yeah. Um, you know, rating yourself on a scale of one to 10 I love and that. just being just v- very basic, yeah. but tuning in with how you are feeling, how that gut is feeling. Yeah. Um, and then not wanting to fall into that trap of doing something intentionally just to make somebody else happy. <laughs> what is it that yeah. makes our happy, uh, yeah. uh, us happy? Cause yeah. we are the only ones that get to decide. Yeah. And I think, um, for women, particularly in the workforce, that feeling of stuckness can just be like, I have no other options. Like, yes. where do you want me to go? Where else can I go? What can I do? Yep. And it's so, I think it's important to start d- dreaming. And I use that word a lot, but it, it's just like, it's a powerful word. Write down what you want because I know you feel like there's nowhere else to go, but there's, you can do anything you want. Honestly, if you want to jump out of a plane, jump out of a plane. Like, if you want to move into a leadership position in your organization, there's nothing holding you back but you. And that's that confidence piece we talked about earlier. So I think it's like, it's as you're starting, like if you're feeling not good, just know you're not as stuck as you think you are. There's always an option. There's always a way forward. Right. And you just, you need to get kind of clear about what you want before you can pave that. I, I think that falling into the victim mindset is very easy for people, yeah. especially women. And and I don't say that in a negative yeah. way, but it's very easy to focus on all of the things that we don't have, all of the things that are holding us back, yeah. all of the things that aren't going right, all of the roadblocks that might be coming up instead of giving yourself that five minutes every morning to just sit and dream. Because somewhere along the lines, or along the way of life, yeah. before we became wives, ex-wives, yeah. um, moms. <laughs> I'm sorry. Fr- <laughs> friends. Um, uh, you know, all, all of the roles that we play, somewhere along the line, we forget about us and what matters to us and just allowing ourselves to dream. I agree. Um, and it sounds so fairy tale like, but it's so but it's true. Like, I, I, I know it sounds like that, but it's not. So how do we help people? You know, what are some tips we can give them to help them kind of muster that courage? Right. So for me, we talked a little bit about that support network and what that looks like. Yep. Right. Um, and how important that support network is. I think if like from a career standpoint, if you're really thinking about as you, as you're growing and you want to change, go find a mentor or go go talk to someone who's actually done it and yeah. who has recently advanced in their career or moved sideways. I keep saying up. A lot of people just want a, a change, right? They want to just a lateral move in their organization. But talk to those people that have been through it that can give you their experience, but that can also like encourage you and lift you up yeah. on your journey. Yep. And I think to tie into that, giving yourself permission that it's okay to have different people in your network at different phases in your life. Yeah. So somebody that you had yeah. in your life 20 years ago may have been an amazing support system for whatever you were going through in your life at yeah. that time. But it's okay to open up your horizons to other forms of support, other forms of guidance, yeah. other forms of being a role model. That. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Um, You talked a, lo- a little bit about this just in terms of getting it out and writing it down. Yeah. Um, and I think learning how to be able to plan and prepare, but not making it so overwhelming where we're getting ready to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> right. Get into action already. Yeah, right. But so I'm going to, I'm going to plan and prepare. Yeah. So, okay. So if we talk about get to mindset, the real life, yeah. both of the businesses that we have. Yeah. In order to plan that and execute that, we could have spent years. Okay, well, so first I'll get my website built. Right. Then I'll do this. Yeah. Then I'll do this. 
I need new pens to match my notepad <laughs> so then I can start coaching people because right. I can't coach them with oh. mismatching things. Oh, and I need to reset up my home office to make sure it's like a real office. Absolutely. So I get Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And I need like great picture, yeah. all of the things. Then I will start. And we always kind of find those excuses as to, well, I'll start when it's Monday or I'll start after I do this. So that whole getting ready to get ready instead of let's just talk about like the basic three things that we need to just start yeah. planning. Right. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't need to be like the entire trip. But what's no. the first thing you need to do? Get gas, get snacks totally. and wear comfortable clothes. And just kind of throwing that out, like just very basic things to start your plan. Yeah, because you can over plan. Right. And I think um, what happens along the way is you're going to hit bumps. Mm-hmm. Right. Things are going to go. You're going to get to a gas station and it's closed Absolutely. for snacks and you're going to be really sad because you can't have snacks, Wendy, but it'll be closed. I love but snacks. I, we know. <laughs> <laughs> um, on your Instagram, I get to see all your snacks all the time. I'm like, oh, Wendy, oh, where'd that come from? And then do you just say to Eric, like, Eric, look what they're having like, for snacks. Uh, Make where me- are my snacks? <laughs> <laughs> snacks is a big topic of conversation. <laughs> um, but I think it's important to know and to, to have that growth mindset. Like, Things will happen and challenges will happen. You will map out the top three things that you need to do. Totally. And in 48 hours, that third one is not there anymore. And there's four more you need to tackle. And that's okay. There's going to be bumps and challenges, but don't let the fear of like, it's, well, well what if it doesn't work or something goes wrong? Hold uh-huh. you back from moving forward and actually doing it and getting into action. I say it all the time at the gym, progress, not perfection, progress, not perfection. So what if you're not running your fastest mile or you're not lifting your heaviest weights or you're all you've come back after being off for a while, progress, not perfection. And it's the same thing with this, right? Every little day, uh, doing something small that's going to help you get closer to yeah. what it is that you want to do, what it is that's keeping you awake at night, and also tying that into what those financial implications time. can be. Be reasonable and be realistic. But again, going back to your being financially responsible, not necessarily having all of the finances figured out, but enough so that you know, okay, maybe I need to make some tweaks. Maybe I need to take a different detour to be able to do this and this. Maybe I need to wear the same shirt that I've had for exactly whatever, Whatever right? So that my kids can still play sport, whatever the case may be, but start to map out all of those things that are super important to you. And then I think it's about embracing a growth mindset. So we've got finding your support network, um, being able to plan yeah. And map things out and then embracing that growth mindset. Being okay when things fall apart because they're going to. Inevitably. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. And embracing those setbacks, um, learning to pick yourself up instead of, mm-hmm. oh, I've just messed everything up. So guess this isn't going to work now. Exactly. But learning that that's totally part of. Yeah. The, and I think I use this analogy in another episode. Like you get one, one flat tire. Yeah. You don't say... Was, Fuck it and slash the other three. Yeah. <laughs> you fix the one flat tire, right? It's kind of the same here. You yeah. continue to just kind of move, move on. Forward. And that's how you yeah. build that confidence in being able to go after your dreams. Okay. So in wrapping up, if there's one thing that you would encourage people to do to move them one step closer to where they want to be, yeah. to take that dare to dream, what would it be? I would start off by saying that your mind listens to everything Mm -hmm. you tell it, Mm -hmm. everything you tell it. Mm -hmm. So when we find that we're starting to chirp away at, you know, excuses or reasons why things won't work, reminding yourself that your mind is listening to everything that you tell it. One of my favorite quotes is clip your dead ends. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about your hair. (laughs) I'm talking about all of the other dead growth that's in your life that needs to be clipped. So clean out your phone messages, clean out your Instagram, clean out your Facebook, clean out things that are no longer serving you um, to allow that energy to be able to open and expand and uh, bring forth new greatness, I love new new energy, new flow, because the only way to allow that new energy to come in is if you start to clean out all of yes. the other stuff that is clogging things up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. I think uh, for me, I've said it already, but dare to dream. So where do you want to be a year from now, write it down, pen to paper. I feel I'm, as you know, I'm super passionate about that, but write it down it, and dream big. It doesn't have, you know, if you want to live on the moon, that's big, but dream it, just dream 
write it down and then start to think about what that looks like. But the first step is a, a micro step. You got to move somewhere. You got to go somewhere. So write it down and just then start thinking. You can read it back, but take that first step. And at least you got to know where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, yep. you can't go to the gas station and get snacks on the way. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a great episode. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, as always, if you took away a tidbit from today's show, we'd really appreciate it if you'd share it out with your loved ones. Hopefully, uh, they've learned something as well along the way. You can also subscribe, like, and share to all of our social channels. Uh, and that way, you'll be sure to get the latest episode of the podcast right to your inbox. And be sure to visit our website at livingrichly.me for all of the, the show notes from today's episode. And you can also see some of our previous episodes as well. So until next week, get out there and continue living your best life.